what do I salvage this? Like, what do I, you know, I wish we could have let Senator Sanders talk more. I mean, I think, you know, like, how long was put in her mouth? One, five, five, five minutes, minutes, something like that? Yeah. yeah. Well, let, let me ask you, well, ask you though. What, what did you think of how Bernie dealt with the thing, the booming voice looking uh, to his left at the Hendricks Nation audience and, uh, and basically doing such arguments as the unemployment rate among the uh, This is why I was getting to the root. I thought, and this is what I think what Senator Sanders does well, right? Talking about economic inequality is the root to a lot of these problems, right? So I wanted that to be hers, and I wanted to kind of talk more about that. But this is why I asked the question of, yeah, you know, Senator Sanders, they hear you on that. But when it comes to race in this country, this is a very urgent, personal conversation. I thought the dynamic between, you know, the protesters, the black protesters, right? And then a mostly white audience on the other side. I thought that was an interesting... To which Bernie talked. Yes. So I thought that was an interesting... Although I thought Senator Sanders were trying to address them. You know, I mean, his was like... He kept looking at me saying, like, how are you going to handle it? I'm like, I'm handling this in the best way that I possibly can, sir. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> he was like, are you handling this? I'm like, yes, sir, I am. Um, and the mic was hot, you know. I'm just glad that I was able to, I'm just glad I didn't run away. I seriously thought about running away <laughs> for a minute. I was like, I just leave the stage. Um, and again, like, we, but here, here's my question, though. I would argue that Netroots Nation, this is my fourth time at Netflix Nation. I covered this as a reporter in 2007, 2008. I wrote an article in 2007 criticizing um, just how not diverse Netflix Nation is. Um, that's how I met Shell Conti, the African-American woman who got up there, you know. Because can you, I thought it was important that a black person, not somebody who was black, got up there and say, we hear you. Do you know what I'm saying? The context of that is so mm -hmm. important, I think, to, to, to realize. But, this is my fourth time doing this. I would argue that Netroots Nation is probably, you know, we use progressive a lot, but I don't think of progressive issues as mar marginalized issues. To me, it's mainstream. <laughs> you know, we're, this is not, we are not in the, what do people say? Like in the um, um, extremists or, um, what was that? Right, you were right, exactly. It's not, like the issues that we're talking about, economic inequality, racism, incarceration, race immigration, these are not, um, what is that phrase? I'm losing my English. Um, fringe. fringe. Yeah. It's not fringe. It's not extremist. I would have loved to have seen Secretary Clinton. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, given she's probably really happy. She's yeah. happy. <laughs> <laughs> now, Netroots Nation is essential in trying to facilitate a conversation and having people be represented. How does Netroots Nation move forward now, mm. given what happened today? I'd be yeah. very curious to figure that out. Right? How do we create a truly, you know, integrated, a truly diverse, a truly representative? How do we have that conversation? Um, so, yeah. What do you think about a session planning being done by the organizers? Because uh, for all the grassrootsy nature of the convention, and I've been ten times, so I've seen it all. But the convention has never had a process whereby participants or you know people who buy tickets or people who are thinking about going are allowed to vote on sessions or have a say in what gets picked. You can submit your ideas, but there's always a, a group that's making the decisions and then publishing the agenda. Do you think that that should be more bottom up? Well, look, I mean, Netroots Nation has always been about the online grassroots, right? So, but I think that's a decision for them to make. I can't really, I'm not part of the governing strategy. Jose, I was going to ask a question that you asked on Twitter, or you emailed it. This is Jose Patino, one of the um, amazing organizers here, um, undocumented. You're a teacher right now, aren't you? Yes, I'm a teacher. Math teacher, he asked a question about, you know, how is Sanders, like the strategy question about Hillary Clinton, like how are you really going to figure out, I wrote it down somewhere, hold on. <laughs> but it wasn't my thing, I was going to try to ask it, but I couldn't do it, man. <laughs> um, but I just wish, you know, part of the Pan Americans goal here is the media um, writes about immigration, especially in this campaign, from like a, often a he said, she said frame. And when you have Donald Trump who's leading in the polls, spewing inaccurate information, and the New York Times and the Washington Post don't call him out. Like some of the stuff that I was saying up there about, you know, the fact that 40% of the undocumented population overstayed their visa. That's a, that's a stunning fact. Why can't, why can't the New York 
time see it fit to print to include that fact, given how much coverage they give, you know, how much coverage they give um, Donald Trump, right? I mean, I think that to me is a real journalistic failure, you know? Here's a question a lot of people were shot in Maine yesterday by a white guy. Did you know about it? Yes, they got the answer. Yes, people were shot in Maine by a white guy. You know, random, whatever. Yeah. But it didn't make the news because of his name. His name was Muhammad. He'd be on the news today. It's uh, like, you know what I'm saying? Or if they were veterans. Or if they were veterans or something. And then I'm a whole star guy. I get it. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. I, I was really hoping that we could talk about that today, but clearly it didn't happen. Right, go ahead. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> originally, we were going to have a, a, a panel for you all. Um, that actually gets to the root of much of what we're trying to talk about um, with how the media has traditionally framed immigration and how we hope that it will be framed moving forward. My name is Ryan Eller. I'm the ED of Define American, the organization that Jose uh, founded in 2011 um, by coming out publicly as being undocumented on the cover of the New York Times. Um, this is Sadia McConville. She's our chief communications officer. And um, while we might do some storytelling today, and I'll certainly point you in the direction of some amazing and powerful um, immigrants, particularly dreamers um, that are here at Netroots that can tell powerful stories. Um, from my perspective as a white Baptist minister uh, who's, you know, uh, helping with an uh, largely you know, citizenship and immigration organization and has been involved in racial justice work for, for over a decade. I think what we just experienced is clearly um, what happens when uh, literally thousands of people are being killed in communities of color. And the urgency of this moment, and as one of the speakers said, the state of emergency that we're in. State of emergency. And I would argue that um, that is something that has not yet been captured by much of the media when we talk about immigration. Um, so in the in the past few weeks, as soon as Donald Trump, you know, made a point, obviously, to point out that um, young woman that was was brutally. Um, killed in San Francisco and that tragedy, yeah. the media started talking immediately about sanctuary cities. Mm -hmm. Well, I get it, right? I get having a conversation about sanctuary cities as a person of faith. I think we ought to talk about how we provide sanctuary for people. But we're also not talking about the tens of thousands of lives that have been lost trying to cross the border the thousands of lives that are in being detained every single day in terrible conditions in for-profit prisons throughout the United States because of a broken immigration policy. And I would argue even worse, we even, even on the progressive end are reporting on the issue of immigration while never talking to the undocumented Americans that it directly impacts. And so that's why at Define American, from our very inception, we've been a storytelling platform. And we just launched an online campaign that Sadia is going to talk about, which is, I think, the most innovative, first of its kind storytelling platform on DefineAmerican.com. That's somebody, national. That's national. Yeah. Where people can go online and tell their stories and share it with the people that they would like to first and then share it with with the world in an effort to change perception about immigrants. We're talking about a population, undocumented Americans. I read a, a headline yesterday um, out of a, a, a news organization in North Carolina that said, um, we must talk about the problem of, quote, um, illegal crimes, crimes committed by illegals, without ever mentioning the fact that unequivocally Every single study that's been done has empirically shown that undocumented immigrants commit less crime in almost every population in the entire United States. Never mentioned it. And worse, never actually talks to any immigrant families. And so 
Um, that's what we really are here to talk about, and that's why we do what we do at Define America, and we believe uh, that words matter, and I think you saw a lot of reaction to um, some of the words that folks were upset about uh, in the session earlier, which is why in 2013, Jose and Define America launched a campaign to get media organizations to stop using the words illegal when they refer to people, and we continue that campaign. And so... Um, I, I just wanted to, to say that up front um, to frame the conversation and uh, Sadia you know, can talk a little more about our coming out campaign that we're excited about, how it can help frame that, and then you know, we'll just close with Jose and whatever questions you all have. Um, and yeah, and just piggybacking off of that, I don't know if anyone got a chance to see Jose on Megyn Kelly's show on Monday, but he did a, a great job. But I thought it was really telling, just in reference to our Words Matter campaign, that in the T's leading up to it, in even, I believe, the CG, he ref she referenced him as an illegal immigrant. And then when she was actually speaking to him to his face, she called him an undocumented immigrant. And so I think that that clearly shows that even Megyn Kelly realizes that words do matter. And so for us, you know, to be able to speak to you as journalists, you know, we really, really want you to understand how important that is. And I, I understand that if you're here, you're probably already aware of that. Um, but just wanted to reiterate that uh, because we all thought that that was a really interesting example of how people do seem to realize how important that is, but uh, may not.